Welcome back everyone, this is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, here with another video going over some of the rules about the events that you can come across in this wonderful game that we're playing together. This video is going to focus entirely on the recovery of Pompeii. I will be putting it in its own playlist, so that any other events that I talk about will go in this playlist. Now, without further ado, the recovery of Pompeii. Now, the recovery of Pompeii is an alliance versus alliance event. You are going to pick 30 to 40 of your best alliance mates or alliance mates that are active in order to participate in this. It is a one hour long fight that you get to pick your start time for. I believe there are still four time slots, at least there are for my region. Saturday and Sunday at 1300 and 2000 UTC. Now this is based off of UTC or London time. So keep that in mind when you're registering for your time slot and pick people that are going to be there. So you've figured out what's going to happen on your end. How do you know who you're going to be up against? Well, we haven't fully figured out exactly how they handle matchmaking, but the premise is supposed to be that the rating, the matchmaking rating, or the alliance power that you bring to the table, the 30 or 40 people that you pick, is matched up with someone of equal power to you. So that you're not facing people that you have no chance again or that you would simply walk all over. That's the idea. As many people will tell you and other creators on this app will tell you, this doesn't happen. There are plenty of times where you'll just walk over your enemies and plenty of times where you can try your best and won't win. But hopefully they're working on it. There's been quite a few complaints about it. However, we hope for the best. Now, when you are selecting your 30 to 40 members, keep in mind that all 40 members count towards the matchmaking rating of your alliance versus the others. A common thing that I see, especially in these older regions, is where they will only pick 30 people. So that you're going to be up against the least amount of power that you can in hopes that all 30 people that you picked are going to show up. You will have 30 members of your main force able to hit the field at any one time. You can't have more than 30 participate in this event. The other 10 members are simply reserves. So say one or two members from your 30 don't show up. Two of the 10 members in reserves can jump in as soon as it's determined that those two won't show up. In this case, it's 10 minutes after the battle begins. Not really long enough for one side to take, to completely take over, but it is a significant amount of time. So if you're going to be picking reserves, keep that in mind that those players need to stick around for those 10 minutes. Some things you need to think about before the event starts. You cannot have battle fever. If you've scouted, or if you've attacked another player, you will have battle fever for around 15 minutes. That means you can't enter until those 15 minutes are up. So, no trying to get that battle fever buff in order to have more power. Doesn't work here. You can't have deployed squads on the field. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're actually teleporting your city, in essence, to another map. If you had troops out, they wouldn't be able to come with you. So the game doesn't let that happen. And you can't have any reinforcement squads in the Alliance Center. Again, same reason. You don't want to be stuck with less troops, and you don't want to be stuck with more troops than you're supposed to have. You bring what you can and only what you can. Now, let's take a look at what the map has to offer. Anyone who has access to this event sees this map, but let's get a little bit of understanding as to what it is, and 
we'll pick from the red side and work from there. You will start the event right here at your red faction base. All 30 of you who've shown up will teleport in right here. As soon as the event starts, you will have the option to move as many of your marches out as you can to go take these buildings. Now I leave these two out because these are what's known as train stations. Train stations travel once every few minutes from the start of the train station to the front here. And it puts you pretty close to the front of the battlefield. They run every few minutes and they allow people who have been stuck back at the Red Faction base to still be able to participate without having to wait 10 minutes to get to the front of the battlefield. This is a massive battlefield. Even riders can have about 10 to 12 minutes trying to cross this entire map, and they're the fastest units out there. You can't be wasting any time, so if you're stuck back here, take the train. The next important buildings you need to worry about are these helipads. Helipads allow you to teleport your base when you capture them. Now you come with a certain amount of teleports when you first start the match and it does cap out at 20 but it does recharge over time. You also gain additional teleports whenever you take a helipad even if it is your enemies. So the idea is get on the train, get to the station, take the helipad so that you can get some of your troops out on either side of the map. And you're not stuck with too many people back behind at base. The next important buildings are what's known as the operation centers. These operation centers are your main source of points for this entire event. Some people argue that the center flag is, but even the max amount of points that it can give doesn't top the amount of points that you can get from controlling even one of these buildings for the entire match. If you see here, it's 160 points per minute in a 60 minute match. So taking these likely at the same time that you take these helipads is essential to being able to win this match. Now, this map also is not accurate because there is another small outpost right here in the middle, but it's equivalent to owning one of these. 20 points a minute. It's basically your baseline points. If an enemy gets back to these, you've likely already lost, but you don't want to lose out on points because you weren't paying attention. So take these two back here, take that one in the middle, get your 60 points per minute, don't waste it. Now, you've taken your two helipads, you've taken your two operation centers, and your side of the field is completely controlled. What do you do next? These beautiful looking zombies here are not only a way of earning points, but a way of getting buffs for your entire alliance. Defeating zombies on the world map is a total of 1200 points per kill. And if I remember correctly, they appear three times a piece. The buffs are damage related buffs. If I remember correctly, it's damage and march speed. I'm sure someone will come and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But having both of these stacked for your team is important because you're going to have a lot of people on your side that may not be able to keep up offensively with the other f side of the field. And you're going to need these attack buffs. So keep watch of time when these guys show up and make sure that you're there. The other important thing to note is here at the center is the biolab. I do not know what they call this but we're going to call it a flag. This flag is worth 3,000 points if you take it back to a building that you control. It doesn't have to be on your side of the field. It just has to be a building you control. 
This also occurs three times in the match. So you will pick this up. It will slow you down tremendously. So account for that. And you get it back to a building you own. Kind of like Water War. It's about that slow. So when this pops up, be ready with a bunch of your friends to make sure that this stays safe. Get it back. Get your 9,000 points for the match. Help you secure your win. Once you have a good handle on all of this happening in the middle of the field, a good way to push that victory is to take one of their operation centers or one of their helipads. Their helipads aren't worth as many points, but if they have to walk from all the way back here, even if they are taking the train, it's going to be harder for them to defend other positions on the map or to attack these zombies or the flag. So pushing them back to their base does give you a huge leg up, even if it's not going to give you a lot of points. The operation centers, as I've stated, need to be held on to in order to win. Kills don't get you points in this game. Capturing buildings, capturing the flag, killing zombies, and one other thing get you points. But kills are not it. So keep that in mind. Just field fighting does nothing. The uh, Now the last thing that gets you points in all of this, and I wish it showed this on this map, are gathering locations. There are different points scattered around the map, most of them around the helipad and around your faction base. Levels 1, 2, and 3 that allow you to gather points. And that's all it is. There's no resources. There's no additional buffs. It's just gathering points. You aren't going to get a lot of points this way, but if your entire alliance is working together to gather these points, it can give you that that extra little bit to push you over the edge if it's a really close fight. Because you could completely even out. Have all of your side controlled. They have all of their side. You've killed your red zombie. They've killed their blue zombie. And you've traded back on this flag. But if your side's gathering and theirs isn't, you win. It's as simple as that. I'd like to remind you again that this event does take an hour. So you need to make sure that the people that you're trusting to take part in this are going to be able to take part for the entire match. Anything less is going to lose out on defenses. It's going to lose out on offenses. And your enemy can abuse that weakness in order to take your victory away from you. Now, if I've left you with any questions about how the game is run, please let me know in the comments below. But one last thing I want to go over, the rewards. Simply participating in this gets you rewards. Even losing still gets you something. It's always better to win, absolutely you can see the huge difference between rewards of winning and losing for the alliance and for the individual. Nice legendary relics, EXP for your heroes, gems that you don't have to pay for. All requiring simple point totals in order to reach these. If you get 15,000 points, which, these are individual points. You get your le 10 legendary relics for winning, 5 for losing, even as long as you still get 15,000. All of these are free, to, free for registering and alliance rewards for simply playing. Now, one thing I need to note, your individual points are separate from your alliance points. Sure, those points can be tallied from doing the same things, but individual points can come from killing. Just know that that doesn't help your alliance to just kill on the field 
with no regard to defending points or capturing flags. I don't discourage killing, but think of your alliance before you go out and try and wipe yourself or your enemies out. And with that, I believe that's everything I have to say about Pompeii. If you have any questions, please let me know. If I've left anything out, please correct me. Please let me know. I'm trying to make this game as enjoyable for everyone involved, new players and old. If you'd like to see a video on any other events that this game has to offer, please let me know. I'm happy to help. And with that, that is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, signing off.